and I'm looking at it and I'm like, bro, I caved my frame in on the bottom. It's still the same bike, I just whole shotted everybody on it. It's just a caved in stock frame. <laughs> Because when you've got a, an anti-hero, that means you've got a hero. You know, like it makes a Ryan Dungey look that much better or it's like an Evander Holyfield looks that much better because of uh, a Mike Tyson. And that's one of the things I'm like half excited for Hayden. I feel like Hayden Deegan could be like the sport's first real heel. You know, like he could be the guy that act, I think and you sort of saw it with the Jordan Smith thing like I Dude. I loved all that you know like the press conference it was dope that Hunter stuck up for him but it's like he just kind of didn't give a f and like you know that you know that there was like Brian back at the trailer being like dude don't worry about it like don't say nothing just like laugh it off like he played that whole situation out so so perfectly and it's like I don't know maybe Maybe Deegan's like the first heel in the sport that like just goes, oh, you f like say what you want, I don't care, you know. <laughs> and then you you'll have people that will love that, and you'll have people that will hate that. You almost need the the I won't say polar opposites, but you need the some of the drama, right? Like there's a, like the whole Pike and it was Freezy, yeah, and that whole situation, dude like felled and whatever they obviously probably were not super stoked on it even though they used it for all their marketing but like that kind stoked, of stuff bro. blows up yeah that stuff blows up and that's like even <laughs> like they don't want you to fight but at the same time that's the excitement right so when it comes to yeah deegan's been killing it and everything like that and a little bit of attitude can go two ways you know what i mean and that's where it becomes like you said like you have the hero the anti-hero the the fans the people that hate on you the haters kind of deal that just fuels the fire to an extent because it creates excitement unfortunately you have people that wish you don't do good but then you have people that are behind you want you to do good kind of deal like it's it's wild to see but like do you think that we need more people like that in the support in the sport or do you think that that would tarnish things no but i think yeah i think everyone's scared of of like what it would do for the sport but i think that the it's the the anti-hero makes the hero and you can see that in in every single sport you know like it just takes a person to be comfortable with it and to know that know that role and to know that position like dude it's brian deegan travis pastrana that's what that was like you had the clean cut american kid and then you had the the punk metal you know like satanic you know like the <laughs> it's like and that wasn't brian like he's the nicest dude in the world like he's such a nice guy and it's like but he had that image and he i'm sure he like lived it to an extent as much as like any 20 year old famous dude that's on espn like i'm sure that there was an element of him living it but it's like he understood that people wanted to to see that you know and yeah i think i think that there's one thing that and this isn't a, a negative thing but as far as feld as like the business goes like it's literally disney on ice you know so that's like an old school family i'm sure it's like a very conservative christian family that that is the one that like owns the sport uh but there is a limitation of what kind of show can be produced by that type of business you know like if you look at the ufc you got a president that was like when covid came along he was like i'm not stopping the show i don't give a what you say i don't give a fuck what bad media we get we're gonna go to dubai we're gonna fight on an island like and then you get a guy like conor mcgregor come along that's doing crazy shit. like fighting's obviously like a different you're dealing with a different group of people like you're actually dealing with crazy people that can, like get <laughs> yeah. in and fight each other but it's like the model the the model kind of works you know and and you get these dudes like a like a chael sonnen right? i don't know if you follow ufc much but there's like a little a, bit there's a guy chael sonnen like 
he he was just the heel of the sport like he talked so much he went after like the the nicest dudes in the sport and you know he was like such a he was like essentially an asshole he was an asshole to fans an asshole to media but he made so much money out of the out of the the fights and the fights that he was in was huge because he was going against like the nice guys and it's i think it's that juxtaposition of yeah hero and and anti-hero and yeah i think coop's probably the closest thing like i think that coop is probably the closest guy that we've had to just like kind of because i guess everyone wants to be loved right and it's like you can try and there's a there's a thing that you can well the way to be loved by everyone is to try and like please everybody you know and i think that coops maybe one of the guys that he doesn't really care to be loved by everybody so he's not really like he's just it's all like a business decision for him um so yeah i just think that i think that the sport would do better with guys that were a little bit more comfortable playing like a, a certain character stepping outside that box a little bit and i don't know maybe like playing to that entertainment factor a little bit more than we do you know but it's like what chase said it's like do we want to be a sport or a show so it's like i guess that's up to the athlete to decide ah that's tough that's a tough question Mm. i feel like you need a little bit of both like i mean look at how many people i think look at how many people probably enjoy watching like i i just use ap because he's an easy example but like how many people probably watch motocross just because they love that dude you know what i mean like the the personality behind it the bickering you know the the rivalries that these guys have like that's what creates fan engagement or creates conversation creates yeah engagement in all mm. to be honest so but like that just something i was just kind of thinking about like what do you think it was like in the rig after the deegan uh jordan like i would love to be a fly on the wall when that happened like what do you think went down i honestly or do you have any insight Nah, i wish i wish i knew i spoke to brian after it uh because like my uh, my personal take like i don't think that there was anything wrong with like i think jordan made some big mistakes in that in that uh altercation i guess you could call it like because you know right so like that whoops you race that track that whoop section when you've got a not flat 90 degree right hand turn after a whoop section and you're on the right hand side of that if you get like one little like an extra kick off that last whoop or that second last whoop with your rear tire the difference of like where you can actually stop your bike by like the tiniest difference in kick is probably like five meters just because you've only got a front tire it's turning right your rear wheel's not on the ground like there's only a certain level that you can squeeze that front brake without tucking the front so it's like for me to i guess that whole incident is based on like did hayden actually run him high and it's like after a whoop section like that on that particular turn i just don't even know that you could make the case that that deegan would have actually had intention to run him high like am i right in saying like how hard it is to get stopped for a turn like that after that kind of section 100 percent. i don't think there was anything wrong with the initial pass i didn't even know like that's kind of where it started for me i thought it kind of started the next corner because yeah like he had the position obviously he knew jordan was trying to come around the outside but if he had the inside lane whether he had jordan there or not everybody watched the races everybody went through the whoops and banked off the the outside of that corner because that's all that was there yeah like that's so that move that was just racing he's trying to stay in the lead jordan came around it is what it is kind of deal but yeah, then it came to the next corner where like he went high, the D like trying to play the little bit of the games and whatnot. And I don't know, I don't want to say too much on it because I don't have a problem with either of them. But in obviously it wasn't good between teammates, especially because homie was in championship contention to an extent. Uh, but but that's where I think that I'm sure Jordan. Sorry, you finish. Actually, no, you finish. I said I'm sure that Jordan. He had every right to be pissed about the situation because there's a little bit too much, but on both ends. But at the same time, I think Jordan was probably kicking himself in the butt because 
he was faster than him. He could have passed him in the whoops the next lap kind of deal, just got a little bit closer. I think he tried, he got a little bit irritated with the situation, tried forcing the issue in not probably the best corner instead of like trying to set him up in a 180 to cut him off. So he, I think he just got, he got excited and that's just shit, shit happened kind of deal. Well, I think that, I think that it come down to, and this is just me fully guessing the situation, but it come down to this whole, oh, I think that Jordan, that it seemed like he just took offense to getting run high after the whoops. And then Hayden basically from how it looked to me is like, he goes to the inside in that next turn. And it's almost like he's just waiting for Jordan to sort of like make the pass, you know, or like just to keep going around the inside. And then he, he cuts down early off that almost like into Hayden. And then it, it sort of, it seemed like it shouldn't have gone on past that second turn. And then they like get in, he like turns into, well, actually after the whoops, that's when Jordan comes across like kind of into him. Like he fades to the inside of the track and then so that's why I think you saw Hayden like stay to the inside so then he fades to the inside goes up in the berm and then cuts down it was like that whole that turn for me I'm like that's where shit got weird I'm like what are you even doing like why can't come into him after and then go to the outside so but I guess the ultimate takeaway is like no matter what the situation is is like you had a chance to just like fully take the high road and like be the experienced guy in that truck and then after the race you go like dude what are you doing we're in a heat like let hayden win the heat race get the second gate pick for the main and then go back to the truck and be like hey dude like what are we doing that's a heat race like i get it after we but like we don't need to do that shit but instead of taking the high road and being the experienced guy and then like dealing with it after the the situation you just everything got left on the track and then i just think that you gave you gave hayden like i don't know it was just such like a big dick energy moment that will probably (laughs) stick with him for the rest of his career you know like that's probably like it almost felt like a bit of a changing of the guard in a sense of like hayden i don't know like it was it seemed like a level up moment for him and like a level down moment for jordan even in like their own personal pecking order where i feel like if jordan just lets him win that heat and then walks off and like little bros him kind of thing at the end of the race and like what are you doing there little brother like that's you know that's kind of silly and and i look back to the conversation that i had with colt and jet where like jet was getting into colt at one of the races when colt won the championship and instead of colt like getting involved in that he just let him do his thing and then after the race he sat down next to him put his arm around him there's like the famous photo of those two talking it was like they'd never even spoken to that point and then he won jet over so much that jet stayed out of his way for the rest of that championship and and colt went on to win the title you know so like i just think that was like such a crazy lost opportunity for jordan to like be the old head and like almost young buck uh, Hayden but it just fully flipped and I just don't think you'll ever see Hayden concede to him now you know but to to the the point is like there was a fucking 30 minute Racer X video of of guys talking about like breaking down that whole situation it was everywhere everyone comment hey job done like that is br- that is brilliant from from Hayden's perspective and the the eyeballs that that got and the attention that that got and the opinion and there might be it might be 50 50 of people that thought he was shit or thought he was awesome in that it created a bunch of like it moved it literally moved the needle of the sport and that's a win yeah and that because i've even had a little bit different thoughts about it since it happened so i think time has a big difference too like that's I'm sure true. as soon as they came off he was hot-headed like i'm sure he, I, that just happened because like when i saw it i thought i'm looking back on it now like i just said i think like obviously jordan probably could have handled it a little bit better situation obviously you're racing like hunter said do we're making you know yeah millisecond decisions so like i'm sure that he's mature enough to be like nah i probably should have done that differently but he didn't because when I first initially watched it, I was like, yeah, Hayden, what are you doing there? You know what I mean? Like afterwards, 
I mean, he could have probably been a little bit more respectful in the interview. I'm sure Jordan definitely didn't like that. But at the same time, like you said, it's kind of that big dick energy kind of deal. Uh, but it kind of changed for me. The first hit after the whoops came in right after that corner, but that was just the way the, the track went. Kind of changed for me when, like, instead of just, like, racing the corner, Deegan, like, paused to look to then try to play that game. Like, it gave me the same thought process that like my brother and I do like we had a little turn track and a little yeah, bike track yeah, back yeah. in the, the the and we would we would literally play the cutoff game like where you would expect or at least kind of expect to be cut off every corner like that's honestly where I got kind of my like race craft and my cut down and my arena crossy kind of vibe it's because Colton and I like we would just mess around as brothers just going around playing a cutoff game and like you would look back and you'd size it up stomp on the brakes cut down like stuff like that and like that kind of gave me a little bit of those vibes so it's like is he just like trying to like make sure that he hits him kind of deal? Like that's when it was like threw me off. Then obviously hit him in the next corner. I was like, Whoa, this is not going to go good. And then it all just went south. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think each of them, I mean, what's done is done. Yeah. That's the biggest thing that I even say, even in the situations that I've been in, obviously a little bit of the drama that we had this past weekend, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you know what, what has happened has happened. We do make decisions in very, very, very quickly. And yes, yeah, we may not agree with some of our decisions, but they've already happened. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125 Gypsy Gang.